This video is sponsored by Notion. There's a common meme in the lifting community that I find hilarious. You can find a ton of great memes on this. And that is this overarching hate of cardio. I've fallen into the same line of thinking in the past as well. This is partially because Minnesota winters are so depressing and cold. It's like impossible to run outside ever. And even in the spring, it actually stays pretty nippy for a long time. And running on a treadmill, <laughs> it's like the gym near my house, just feels very uninspired. So I've never really loved cardio. And especially in the last eight months, I've completed what is called a bulk. It's where you train for strength and focus on the main compound lifts and eat in a caloric surplus so that you have the extra energy to progressive overload on the main lifts. I've been doing this for a long time now, and so I've just been getting chunkier. But if the comments on my last comedy sketch have any truth in them, it seems like the bulk was successful. I put on a little bit of muscle, which is great. But after building up a preliminary amount of strength, I definitely started to sense that I was starting to hit my first plateau. My progress was slowing down. I've been finding that I'm just getting a little less excited to go to the gym. And this hasn't just gone for fitness, but more so my life in general. Lately, it just feels like things have been moving more slowly. Maybe I'm just spinning my wheels. A lot of this has been driven by some confusion that I feel in some aspects of my personal life. But also there's been doubt I've been feeling about my career. Sometimes I wonder why I'm not happier considering the fact that I'm in the process of achieving so many of the goals that I like had only hoped I could go after as a younger man. And some of these things that I really wanted to be successful in as a younger person, I'm starting to find success in, and yet I still struggle. On a simpler note also, after all these months of just bulking, I just feel slow and fat. I decided I wanted to give running another go. Now this is a mindset that I have arrived at in life pretty often, especially in the springs. I just do get excited about running again. And in the past, I would notice great mental benefits from just like a little bit of casual jogging every day, but I would often just drop off. This time, I gotta be honest, it feels like I'm trying to shake off some enormous mental malaise. And if the last six months have taught me anything, it's the power in the maxim, as within, so without. If you can change things in your inner life, that's how you start getting out of a rut and changing your life externally. I figured if I could move my body better and faster, those areas of my life that felt stuck or confused, maybe they would catch some momentum as well. All right, I'm about to test out my mile for the first time for speed, maybe in years <laughs> since I was a teacher, I actually tried to run a fast mile. I'm actually quite nervous. The ground is a little uneven, so this might affect my results. When I do my final lap, it'll actually be at a track. <laughs> I'm just like deeply out of shape. I've just been, well, bulking, eating like 3,500 calories a day for six months. So I'm probably gonna be really slow but let's give this a go. Time to listen to some Bollywood Bhangra music. I started things off by seeing how I would feel by running a timed mile. I don't feel old in terms of my body most of the time, but like attempting this mile after so long, pretty much right away my knees started to hurt, my ankles were aching, I was out of breath right away. It didn't take long to feel horrible and ultimately I landed at a mile time of about nine minutes and 40 seconds. In other words, I was slow as hell. That gives us a long way to go if we wanna get down to six. It's like shaving off three minutes, but everything hurts. Like I have super flat feet, so my knees hurt immediately. My ankles are, it's like <sighs> feeling it. Day one, you know? The next several weeks, I began doing track workouts. Now granted, I could still only run for about two miles at a time without needing a break. And to protect my knees a little more, I would run on soccer fields, in sports domes, just on grass in general. And that's the annoying thing about Minnesota. We could be in early spring, but there's still a chance of it snowing or just being too cold or windy to make running outdoors feasible. We have the coldest winters out of anyone, except for maybe Canadians. Canadians. Sorry, Joey. But who likes them? No one. <laughs> Nevertheless, I have persisted. For a while there, it didn't feel like I was making progress, but after a bit of time, I've started noticing some pretty startling benefits. And that's what I wanna share in this video. Seven benefits I've started noticing from running consistently and running for speed. The first is that I'm engaging different muscle fibers and I'm gaining a new type of athleticism. Now, by this time, I have built up a pretty intermediate amount of strength in my legs. I can comfortably squat, around 265 pounds for multiple sets of five. But I noticed that once I started doing sprint workouts, 
I would still get crazy sore, way more sore than I would get from squatting. Clearly, I've started engaging a different kind of muscle fiber. Evidently, running engages fast twitch muscle fibers. Practically, what this means is that I've got a little bit more of a spring in my step. Especially, I noticed this with boxing, like my footwork, my ability to just move my feet and not feel so plodding has improved a lot. And it feels good to not feel so slow. This leads me to the second benefit, better endurance. I thought it would take a lot longer to build up any sort of aerobic base where I don't tire as easily. And like I said, my main form of testing my cardio until now has been boxing. In the past, if I would go one round of boxing, <laughs> I would be like sweating profusely and I would like constantly just like be down on the ground or sitting down after a single round of boxing. I would be completely gassed every round. And lately what I've been finding is that I could finish a round and just still be on my feet. There was even an instance where my trainer said to me, whoa, looks like you don't need a break. Like we could just keep going. It's been happening pretty subtly, but I feel that there has been a general increase in my energy levels, both mentally and physically. Back in the day, if I did a shoot during the day with Thomas, I would just feel like really tired by the end of it. And in the last month, I've even been scheduling some night shoots after working in the day, just because I've got the, I've got the gusto, I've got the energy for it. I think, this has been coming from the running. This is something new I've been gaining on top of the weightlifting. The body meets new demands you put on it pretty quickly. And after my first session of sprints, my legs were sore for a couple of days. Now I can feel myself adapting. I've got better endurance and that feels fantastic. The third benefit I've noticed is a runner's high. Runner's high is a real thing. It's something that I would look forward to when I started cross country for the first time in high school. For someone like me who often struggles with overthinking, honestly, sometimes I just feel bummed out. The euphoria I get out of an endurance-based effort like running has been really different. And it's been, I would say amplified, like more significant than weight training a lot of the time. It feels like a vacation from my own mind if I ever do sink into a negative thought pattern. I thought maybe I would need to like go on longer runs, like six to eight miles to start feeling that, you know, runner's high. But actually I do get it after sprinting or after even just a couple of miles. In John O'Reilly's book, Spark, he said that if you put exercise in a pill form, it would like outcompete a lot of antidepressants. In fact, he directly said that exercise is like taking a little bit of Prozac, a little bit of Ritalin. And even though I've been weight training consistently the last several months, Running has amplified my mental health in a new way. Hippocrates put this in a very badass way in like one of the first medical textbooks ever written in 300 BC. He advised that his depressed patients should go for a long walk. And if they're still depressed, then walk again. I think this rings even more true for running. The fourth benefit I've noticed is that it's easier to meditate. Meditating is something that I've believed in for a very, very long time. I've been doing it for several years now, but you have to be at like a very specific energy level and like condition to have a successful meditation. For instance, if you're too hungry, you can't meditate well because you'll just be thinking about food. But then if you had just eaten, then you'll just be like digesting and you'll be too lethargic to have your mind kind of dial in. I also find that if I tried meditating first thing in the morning, my brain is like too sleepy. And so I've often fallen off from meditating just because I need a very specific window to feel like I had a great one, to feel good about it. And one thing that running has given me is like a more primed brain. It's like more oxygen has been put in my brain and I'm sure there's some toxins that have been released where it's just easier to have a great meditation. And for me, meditating is like one of the things I need to get my life back on track. And so because I'm more readily in a space where I can have a good meditation, I've been sticking with the habit more. And so as a result, I do feel like things are starting to turn around a little bit. The fifth benefit is that it's easier to keep moving in life. An idea that I've really loved from my friend Joey, who runs the channel Better Ideas, is this concept of how action and mood are a feedback loop on each other. Now, often what we do is we wait for the mood to strike us and then we take action. Then it becomes inspired action. But you don't always have to wait for the mood to hit you to take the action. That loop also works in the other direction. So you can take an action and then you'll find yourself being in the mood to take that action once you start getting going. We did it. I often feel this way when I like make plans with friends because I know that making social plans is like good for me. It helps me not be lonely. It makes me like motivated in a lot of ways. It just feels good to like make plans and to do things. But oftentimes like 30 minutes before the start of my plans, 
I just feel like canceling. I think to myself, oh, I'd be way more comfortable if I was just chilling at the pad and just like not seeing people right now. What if it's a waste of time? What if I don't like it? All these other reasons. And so I'm not in the mood. But then as soon as I get in the car and I start doing the thing, I start following through on the commitment I set for myself, whether it's seeing a friend or saying yes to someone's podcast episode and then actually doing it. Like I feel great once I start moving. When I'm moving or I'm in the middle of something, like things start becoming good again. And one thing that running has given me is like you are moving physically more often, but an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So like once I'm moving in one aspect of my life, I'm more okay with just moving all the time. And so I'm not, you know, stuck in this place of like, oh, should I do this? Oh, I don't quite feel like doing this. I'm taking action that is changing my mood and putting me in a place of wanting to take more action. So you just get stuck less because you don't think about like, oh, should I do this or not? You just do it. It just being an object in motion is just good for me and I feel great about it. You know, moving is living. Benefit number six is clearer thinking. In the same book, Spark, John Brady talks about how steady state cardio releases this neurotransmitter BDNF, brain derived neurotrophic factor, which he has labeled miracle growth for the brain. This literally helps create and grow new brain cells. And so you just feel sharper. I mean, everyone has felt sharper after exercise, but I think this is even more amplified with running. There's this amazing video by this channel, What I've Learned on exercise in the brain that you can check out if you wanna delve into the science very deeply. But from like a high level perspective, I do just have more mental clarity. If I had to like put a guess on it, I would say like 20 minutes of running early in my day will give me back at least an hour or maybe even up to two hours of like more productivity because I've got like more mental clarity. Sometimes I like get mini lapses in my thinking. It gets pretty frustrating, but a small way this shows up is like on the internet. I like sometimes open up a tab and then forget what I was supposed to be searching for. Or if we're shooting in the field and we're changing locations, I'll open up maps and then forget the new location I'll need to go to. It'll be like 20 seconds at a time, but I'll just be like, what was I doing here? Thomas has often made fun of me for doing this. It's been happening less. Like I'm more just like one to two, like able to go between activities and stay on track with things much more. It's like I have less ADD. I can just do the thing I'm supposed to be doing. And that's been great. In combination with this feeling of being able to move better and do things and not overthink, being able to stay on point and be mentally sharp on efforts and endeavors has been a wonderful thing. The seventh benefit, and this one is a really big one, is that running has given me a new goal to work towards. At the start of this video, I said how when I first went for a timed mile, I paced at nine minutes and 40 seconds. I just attempted the mile again yesterday and I was kind of dreading it. I didn't think I would have gotten any faster, but I got it in seven minutes and four seconds. That's very surprising for me because I still feel slow. So I didn't think like I would have made any improvement, but seeing improvement in any aspect of your life and feeling like you have a goal to work towards, it just helps get you unstuck. It helps get you out of that rut. You know, right now I've set a goal of getting under six minutes on a mile. I think getting that fast, it just feels like a fun challenge to work towards. It feels very motivating. And it's given me a form of training that I really look forward to. I think one of the big takeaways I've gotten from life these past three months is the beauty in reducing your timeline, reducing the scope of things, and allowing yourself to chase simple goals and change things up. If you ever feel like you're in a rut or you're stuck, just like take your life, the entire timeline of your life, and then just compact it into a smaller window. And then just see what little things you can do in that small window. And that might be enough to get you going. So my last uh, repeat mile of the day is done. Feeling amazing. Very rainy weather in Minnesota today. We're running on very like wet grass. My feet are soaked, but you know what? Just trying feels great. And uh, this running has given me a lot more energy. Like, uh, yeah, just like I'm, I've got, I've got more juice in the tank to do more things. It's been amazing. It's definitely helping me get out of this, this rut that I feel like I've been. Like I am every year in the first quarter of the new year, I always feel like I'm slow. And this is turning that around for me. Before continuing, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Notion. Notion is this interface that I've been using for like two and a half years. I use it to track all the notes that I 
come across when I'm reading books to keep track of upcoming videos that we're making, the scripts that we're working on. It allows you to take notes, manage tasks, set goals, and so much more. You can save time, increase your productivity, and make it easy for everyone on your team to find information and process information. I use it to like do mind storms and um, chase big ambitions. One of my big ambitions for the second quarter of the year is to work with a luxury brand. I've always like loved Prada, Chanel, Omega watches. Maybe not the product themselves, but just the advertising that has gone into their campaigns is something that I've like always been a big fan of. And uh, recently we've been offered some projects from bigger clients uh, that have let us make commercials for them and it opened my mind up to this idea of like wanting to go for bigger commercials to make uh, with some luxury brands. And so all of these efforts, all of these goals of mine, I track on Notion. There's a Kanban board where I keep track of what needs to be uploaded when. I keep track of my sponsors through Notion. I also have a Notion for all of my coaching clients, which by the way, if you're interested in checking out, I am accepting four more slots, so you can apply for coaching with me in the description box. Every one of my clients has their own goals page on Notion. We keep track of their goals and their timeline and make sure they're hitting their deadlines when appropriate. I've also got a Notion that's just for myself where I keep track of how many workouts I've done, like goals for my life before I turn like 30 years old or some kind of milestone. I have my own business coach and every piece of feedback he gives me, I put on Notion. And the best part about Notion is that they have a plan for like teams to collaborate on, but also personal plans that start being completely free. You can of course go with one of their pro plans and I am subscribed to their pro plans, but you can start off Notion with a free plan and it's just, for logging your ideas and strategizing, it's just been fantastic. So if you click the link in my description box, you'll get to try out Notion. Definitely check them out. Thank you, Notion, for sponsoring this video. Like I said, I have been feeling like I'm in a rut. You know, the funny thing about these videos these days is that even though the title says that I'm solving a problem in the video, <laughs> I end up saying like, this is what I'm going through. But I gotta say, I am proud of myself for shaking things up, you know? maybe dropping my ego a little bit in what I want to get done with my career, with my life, and uh, being more simple, being willing to chase simple things. And so if you're in the same boat as me, if you've ever felt like you're in a rut, maybe you're going through some sort of creative rut right now, give running a go. It could give you some new ideas. It could shake things up in a way where things do get unstuck. And at the very least, it'll help build up your aerobic base, which will be good for life and longevity. If you're new to this channel, my name is Nick Hill. This channel features about one to two videos a week with topics related to personal development, productivity, business, creativity, and even the occasional comedy sketch. So if that's something that appeals to you, consider subscribing. But with that being said, for those of us who keep moving, to us I say greatness is coming. Cheers.